The FDA is issuing a warning about a rare side effect of the Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine. It comes as new cases are on the rise and the Delta variant is spreading in the U.S. Natalie Brand reports. The spread of the fast-moving Delta variant across the U.S. is putting increased pressure on Americans who have yet to get vaccinated. Any variant that emerges uh, concerns us because of the uh, possibility that it's more transmissible. It may change the severity of illness. The CDC is monitoring a surge in COVID cases in states across the South and West, especially in under-vaccinated areas. A lot of the behavior that I think is driving spread of infection is people wanting it to be over and acting as if it's over and really abandoning even the more modest precautions like mask wearing that would help. Orange County, Florida has joined the list of places now recommending that people go back to wearing masks indoors, even if fully vaccinated. The CDC says the current vaccines stand up to the Delta variant. The agency's advisory committee has scheduled a meeting for next week to discuss vaccine safety. On Monday, the FDA added a new warning to Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine, saying the shot may be linked to a very rare neurological disorder known as Guillain-Barre syndrome. People with viral and bacterial infections can get an autoimmune reaction against the nerves in their body, and it happens occasionally with vaccines. Doctors say the benefits of the J&J shot still outweigh potential risk. But as discussion turns to the potential for booster shots, U.S. health officials say more data is needed. There's ongoing uh, work with FDA to determine if and when and for whom booster doses would be indicated. Pfizer met with Biden administration health officials this week to talk about preliminary booster data, and the National Institutes of Health has launched a clinical trial of its own. Now Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. As we just heard, there have been about 100 preliminary reports of Guillain-Barre syndrome out of nearly 13 million people who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. For more on this, let's bring in Carl Zimmer. He writes the Matter column for The New York Times and is the author of the book A Planet of Viruses. Carl, good to have you on the program again. Has the CDC found any commonalities among those who have reported developing the syndrome? Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, and part of the problem is that there are so few cases that uh, it's it's really hard to to analyze them. Um, e even though this seems to be uh, a slightly elevated risk with this vaccine, um, it, it remains incredibly rare. So you just don't have enough people to look at to say what might what they might have in common. I read that. Um with respect to who seems to be among those most affected, it's men uh, so far, many of these uh, who have reported that. Is that right, Carl, age 50 and older? Uh, yes, but it's still, it's, it's such a small group that it's hard to know whether that is just, is that really telling you something about men's risks mm -hmm. versus women, or it's just random. It's just too small of a group to really say much. Yeah, we can't draw any conclusions just yet. But, Carl, how could this news impact demand for vaccines moving forward here? Uh, this is um, another uh, warning that this Johnson Johnson vaccine is getting, in addition to another warning about a, a, a very rare risk of blood clotting. So, you know, the, both of these things will have to be uh, brought up um, with people who are uh, considering this vaccine. Um, it's really important, again, to put this into context. Uh, the, the risks of these conditions are, are very, very, very low. Um, and for the most part, they can be uh, easily treated uh, and resolved. Um, and uh, the, the flip side is that if you're not vaccinated right now, uh, with the Delta variant uh, surging and cases rising again in the United States, um, you could be at, at really serious risk of COVID, which uh, comes with all sorts of, uh, of its own risks, such as death. Uh, no one, uh, mm -hmm. There's no evidence that someone has died of a vaccine, um, and we have well over 600,000 people dead of COVID-19 in, in this country. So. 
Um, it's important to to find these risks and to, to for for people to understand uh, the the risks that they pose, but also to understand put them into context to understand the size of the risk versus uh, what we face with COVID. Yeah, the context here is so critical. Well, the Associated Press is reporting a number of COVID-19 outbreaks have been tied to summer camps in several states, including Illinois, Texas, and Florida. How worried are health officials about these kinds of outbreaks, especially as we get closer to the new school year? Well, it just goes to show that uh, uh, COVID hasn't gone away, and um, you know, these a lot of these camps, you know, the kids are too young to be vaccinated. Uh, kids under 12 are not being vaccinated. So you just, you know, for the virus, there are just like lots of new hosts to infect. Uh, the Delta variant that's dominating now is extremely transmissible, it appears. So, uh, you know, for camps that are not really making much effort to, to slow down the spread of the virus, you, you should expect outbreaks. And, and we will expect these uh, at schools that don't take proper measures as well this fall. Now, children are, uh, are far uh, less risk from COVID-19 than older people, but that doesn't take away from the fact that hundreds of children have died of COVID-19 in this country. And uh, there are some number of children who have uh, or are suffering from conditions sometimes called long COVID, uh, where they're going to have these chronic uh, problems that could last for months or longer. We don't have good numbers on how many of them there are. But, um, you know, if we, if we keep uh, uh, fostering these outbreaks, there are going to be more of these sick kids. And these kids are also going to pass on the virus to their families. Uh, and, you know, we still have less than half of this country fully vaccinated. Uh, and so that means there are a lot of adults who are still vulnerable. So um, against that backdrop, pop star Olivia Rodrigo is going to the White House tomorrow, and she's recording videos with the president and Dr. Anthony Fauci about the importance of young people getting vaccinated. Do we know, Carl, how interested are younger Americans in actually getting the vaccine? Well, uh, you know, there, there is a, you know, a lower uptake uh, in, in younger Americans. And part of it is, um, you know, that the, the disease itself is, is of less risk than, than to older people. So it may not seem as urgent. Um, of course, you know, young people think they're going to live forever. And, um, and also, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to remember that, you know, that getting vaccinated doesn't protect, just protect you as a young person, but also uh, helps to protect those around you. So, so hopefully these kinds of messages may help to get younger people to be thinking about getting their vaccines too. I wonder, is there any kind of data, Carl, that indicates so far, does it appear on the whole that young people can be convinced to get vaccinated? Obviously, it's not a monolithic, no group is monolithic, but is there any kind of evidence or data to suggest that perhaps younger people could be motivated by uh, these kinds of high profile sort of public health messages, depending on the messenger? Um, I don't know of, of specific data about this kind of approach, but um, you know certainly public health uh, experts have been uh, you know for for years have been looking at uh, different ways of getting across messaging, and um, you know it looks like you know different people will re respond to to different messengers. So in some cases it might be you know your favorite pop star. Some in other cases it might be your doctor. Uh, uh, so it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all uh, way to get the word out. All right, Carl Zimmer for us. Carl, always good to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much.